the same picture, really. Um, but here, I know that I can simplify this by getting rid of this circle, and then when I do that, I'll get q squared, because I had a factor of q here, times this, plus one times this. Okay, and now this isomorphism here, we wrote it down before. It's the matrix that looks like um, eta x, eta. Okay, now this is supposed to be an isomorphism of chain complexes, so it should be a chain map. So this map down here has to make this square commute, but that's easy to do. I just pick eta x s, and a to s. All right, and then I claim this is an isomorphism of chain complexes. Okay, but you know, a to s, what is this? This is a one handle addition followed by a canceling two handle. Okay, so I added this one handle and then I cap that off. Okay, that, that cobordism just cancels to give me the identity cobordism. Okay, so another way that I could write this complex is that it's isomorphic to, I have this one object here, it goes to q squared times this plus this. Um, and here the map is multiplication by x, that's adding a dot, and the identity. All right, so now, now we're almost done, but we need a really important lemma. Um, this lemma is called the cancellation lemma. Sometimes this is also called Gaussian elimination. Okay, it says that if say i going from b to b prime is an isomorphism, then now I'm gonna write down a big chain complex that looks like cn plus one goes to cn plus b goes to cn minus one plus b goes to c um, n minus two. Okay, and now I'm gonna write down the maps in this chain complex, so let's call this dn plus one. This I'm gonna put a question mark because actually I don't care what it is. I'm gonna call this alpha, beta, gamma, and here I'm gonna use the isomorphism yoda. And here I have um, dn minus one, and again, something that I don't care what it is. Okay, so here's a chain complex. This chain complex is homotopy equivalent to the chain complex that looks like Cn plus one goes to Cn, goes to Cn minus one to Cn minus two, and here I have the obvious things, Dn minus one and Dn plus one, and in the middle here, I should have written a smaller homotopy equivalent sign, I have alpha minus um, beta yoda inverse gamma. Okay, so th this is the single most useful fact about homological algebra that you won't find in a standard algebraic topology textbook. It, it's, it's really handy. Um, if, if you've never seen it before, you should, pr you should prove it during the exercise session. Um, wh why, would I, why do I call this cancellation? Well, for example, a common situation which this might apply is if you have a Morse complex. All right, so maybe you know that if I have 
a Morse complex, and I've got two critical points and a unique flow between them, then I can cancel those two critical points to get a Morse complex with two fewer critical points. Okay, that's exactly what's going on here. Okay, this yoda here is the isomorphism between those two points, and this complex here is what you would get in your new Morse complex after you perform that cancellation. Okay, but back over here, what does that mean? It means that I have a one here. This is an isomorphism. Um, so that means that I can cancel this object with this object, and I'm left with just nothing goes to Q squared times this, which is, let's say, CKH of this tangle diagram up to shifts. Okay, and these shifts are the same shifts that you should have gotten when you did the exercise yesterday. Let's try the Reitermeister 2 move. Be a little bit quicker with that, but it's worth looking at. So. Okay, so now, um, so say I look at CKH of this diagram here. This is a Reitermeister 2 diagram. Let's just draw the cube of resolutions. So down here, I'm going to get a diagram. I give this the zero resolution, and I have to be very careful here. Um, right? This crossing does not look like this one. I have to make sure that I turn my head 90 degrees when I give this the zero and the one resolutions. So down here at zero, zero, for example, I get something that looks like this. Over here at zero, one, um, I get something maybe that looks like this. Up here, I get this. And over here, um, I get something that looks like this. Okay, now I'm gonna simplify this object. But before I do, I wanna look for a second at this complex here. You see this orange complex is really nothing other than CKH of um, this diagram right here, okay, which is also a Reitermeister 1 move. I think it's actually the Reitermeister 1 move we did right over there. Um, so, wait, no, I'm, this is totally wrong. I circled the wrong thing, I'm sorry. Let's try this again. How's that look? That looks more like this complex. Okay. And this complex over here looks like CKH of um, this diagram. Okay, so that's good. I guess I only computed, this is kind of the other Reitermeister one move, but maybe you'll believe me that the differentials look kind of similar. So in this complex, what do I get? I'm gonna get something, oh, and I didn't write in any Qs, did I? Q, Q squared, Q. All right, so here I get, Something that looks like this goes to, let me write this as Q plus Q inverse times this. I was parenthesizing these, wasn't I? This goes to, oops, but there's a factor of Q, so actually this is Q squared plus one. This goes to Q squared times this. And over here, I get Q times this. 
And if you work out these matrices, well, these matrices we worked out before. Um, this is x and 1. And over here, I think, and maybe let me mark, let's call this, remember, in this picture, we're sort of operating on the right-hand angle. So this is x right. It's multiplication by adding a dot on this component. And similarly here, I think you'll find that this is x left and 1. <coughs> no. 1 and x left. Okay, and again, we see that we have these ent entries that are isomorphisms. So I can cancel this with this, and this with this, and I'm just left with this, which is CKH up to a shift of the other Reitemeister diagram. Okay. Okay. All right, so you can imagine you can do the same thing with a Reitemeister 3 move. I won't do it here. Um, so, um, proposition, so if D and D prime are related by a Reitemeister move, then CKH of D, let me write a twiddle here that means chain homotopy equivalent possibly with a shift, is the same as CKH of D prime. Okay, and the proof is basically the same as for bracket. So we check for individual Reitemeister moves. So these very particular diagrams. Then we note that if we add some straight edges, it doesn't matter, and then we factor, right? And then we use the fact that sort of C of DD prime is C of D tensor C of D prime. Okay. Okay, let's maybe do one more quick example. So we looked at, let's take an interesting tangle now, something where I have two crossings going the same way. Okay, well this is going to look, how's it going to look? Now I think what I'm going to see is, I'll see this down here going to, um, one of these is long, over here the other one is kind of long, and up here I get this, and I have factors of Q, and Q, oops, Q and Q squared. Okay. Okay. Um, so what is that isomorphic to? So now it looks like Q inverse plus Q times this. This goes up to Q times this. This goes over to um, also Q times this. And both of these here go over to Q squared times this. These are saddle morphisms, one-handle addition. Um, and these maps here look, um, let's see, over here, this was the thick side. So this here is probably something like um, 
oops, this is a matrix that goes this way, isn't it? So this is x left in one, and this is also a matrix that goes this way. This is probably um, x right in one. Okay, now you see that I can cancel this object. Well, I have, uh, you know, I could have canceled it with this or with this. I could have done either one. Doesn't matter. Um, but I can't cancel this one away. So this complex here is homotopy a complex equivalent to a complex that looks like Q inverse times this goes to Q times this goes to this, oops, with a factor of Q squared. This is a saddle morphism. If you work out what this is, it's the difference between XR and XL. Okay, I'll leave you to convince yourselves of that. But let, let's at least check that D squared equals zero. And I'd see here XR and XL are different morphisms because the dot is on either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. But once I compose with this saddle, I get a connected cobordism from here to here. Okay, and the, you know, I can move the dots around, so they're the same, the same morphism on here. So I really do get d squared equal to zero. Okay, so in the exercises, um, you're asked to do the same thing for a similar braid, and I'd advise you that rather than writing out an n-dimensional cube, it's better to take this complex and tensor it with one more crossing like this, which you can do by this relation here. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna make one more statement and then I'm gonna stop and talk about the big picture for a couple minutes and then we'll be done. Okay, so the remark that I wanna make, maybe let's call this a proposition. Um, so, if I take CKH of D, um, this is homotopy equivalent to what's called a minimal complex. So no components of D are the identity. Well, that's easy, right? I, I just use the cancellation lemma. If I see a component of D that's the identity, it means I can cancel and get something smaller. And I just keep on doing that until there's nothing left to cancel. But moreover, any two such minimal complexes So minimal complexes, homotopy equivalent to CKH of D, are actually isomorphic. Okay, so I can think about, I don't have to think about sort of abstract homotopy equivalents. You know, if I want to tell if two chain complex, you know, two tangles, two diagrams give me the same chain complex, I just cancel down to a minimal complex and look and see if they're isomorphic as complexes. Um, so CKH of T1, which is by definition this minimal complex, maybe let's say makes sense. Okay, so the minimal complex that I get doesn't depend on the diagram of the tangle that I picked. Okay, so now um, I seem to have a few minutes left, so let me indulge in a little big picture discussion. Um, so if we go back to the Kaufman bracket, um, what I see is that if you give me um, a pair Xn and Xm, I get a vector space V and M. Um, this is actually the same as V 
n plus m. So the picture here is that uh, if I have, for example, a simple planar tangle that looks like this, um, I just glue these two sides together and say that I could stretch this out. Oops, I should have said maybe um, Vn plus m comma zero uh, to look like this. Okay. And a tangle T going from Xn to Xm gives me bracket of T, which up to some shift factors that I've been lazy about, is a well-defined element in here. Okay. So really what I have is I have sort of a functor from the category whose objects are these Xn's and whose morphisms are tangles over to the category of vector spaces and linear maps. So this is sort of a relative TQFT. Okay. And so what, what does Kovanov homology do? Well now, um, so now Kovanov homology lets me go from Xn, the pair Xn, Xm, to a category um, say, this is really the category of chain complexes of CBN and M. Okay. And a tangle T from Xn to Xm gives me an object of this category, CKH of T in here. But now I can go one step further. So if I have a cobordism sigma from T0 to T1, Okay, by the same kind of movie move business that we talked about yesterday, I can use this to get a morphism from chain map from CKH of T0 to CKH of T1. All right, and so if you think about it, what I really have here is sort of a two functor between two categories. All right, so for example, the fact that this thing behaves well with respect to horizontal composition is part of the statement that that's a two-functor. Okay, and really, what, what categorification from a topologist point of view is about is it's taking, uh, say, a relative um, two plus one dimensional TQFT and turning it into an extended relative, let's call it two plus one plus one dimensional TQFT. Okay, that's, you know, sort of the whole goal of the categorification game from a topologist point of view. So it lets you upgrade this kind of TQFT to this kind of extended TQFT. Okay, so now there are lots of. Question? Yep. Yeah, so, while we're on the big picture kind of stuff, um, so can you generalize the tangle of the three manifold? Ah, yeah, great question, right? They, they, you know, that's the, so that's the million dollar question. Um, so, the, uh, you know, the answer is no, certainly not that we know how to do. Um, and. So Riemann surfaces times R, um, even there it's difficult, right? So what, you, what you're really talking about is sort of categorifying the skein module of that Riemann surface. And um, I, I think there, there are partial results in that direction, but it's, you know, it's not the case that everything is happy and obvious. Uh, um, but yeah, so maybe since, 
So since you asked the question, um, let me remark that um, for, right, so th this picture here was about the Jones polynomial, right? Um, and so one case, you know, the one case where we do have a story that extends like this is in floor homology. Okay, and that's, that's in some sense related to the fact that the Alexander polynomial has this really robust definition. Um, right, the Alexander polynomial is an invariant of pi one. Okay, so it's easy to define the Alexander polynomial of a knot in a three manifold. I'll just look at pi one of the complement. Okay, so similarly here, the, the one place that we do have this picture extending is with the Alexander polynomial, where the extension is given by Fleur homology and not Fleur homology, and by maps induced by not Fleur homology by cobordisms, which were studied by Juhas and Zemke and Marengen, for example. Um, yeah, but it, it is, right, so it's a central problem, and it's been a problem for a long time, as to whether this picture extends um, into the world of three manifolds. And I, you know, I think, in some sense, um, there are interesting recent ideas in physics. So I think Pavel Putrov will talk next week about you know, physical ideas which are perhaps you know, offer a way to think about extensions like this. No promises. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, so we do not know how to do this for tangles in an arbitrary three manifold. Okay, and I think it's lunchtime. Um, so I'll, pro I'll postpone the rest of the big picture um, to the start of the next lecture. So the, the other part of the big picture is to say a word or two about general quantum invariance. But I, I think that'll go well at the start of next lecture.